What's up, gang? Welcome to Room and Board. My name's Chris George, and today we have the five reasons you shouldn't back Voidfall. That's right, the series is back again. A new 4X game by Mind Clash Games. Well, mostly 4X. 4X, but make it Euro. But keep the minis. Doesn't matter. What does matter is that Voidfall has crossed the threshold for this series. One million dollars. 862,200 euros. Yeah, it doesn't really have the same ring to it, does it? Which means you better get ready for an epic takedown. Okay, no, I'm sorry. I don't know what that was. But for those of you who are unfamiliar, I only make these types of videos for campaigns that are doing incredibly well. And the basis behind these videos is that Kickstarter FOMO, fear of missing out, is a real thing. As board gamers, we all like to get our hands on the next best thing. And the next best thing. And the next best thing. So my goal with this series is to provide a counterpoint to that hype and make sure when that $200 box filled with game arrives at your doorstep, you're equally as excited as you were today when you hit back. Pledge. Charge my credit card. I mean, of course you'll be excited. It'll be a new cool game coming to your door, but will you be equally as excited? Well, that's why I'm here to put your conviction to the test. But first, let's talk about the positives, or just what particularly attracts me to this campaign, because there's a lot of positives here, obviously, since it's raised over a million dollars. And because it's one of the first Euros in a while to do that. I know it's branded as a 4X game, but because it's by Mind Clash, who are kind of known for their Euros, and David Turksey is one of the designers, and he does a lot of Euros, and it feels like more of a Euro to me, well, I don't care. I'm still thinking of it as a Euro. Which is incredible. I was gonna say, with no minis as well, but a lot of the draw with that big Galactic Box expansion is you get a whole bunch of little ships to move around, and shoot people with. So quite a few minis. But it is exciting for me at least to see Mind Clash, who are known for their Euro games, only keep going up and up and crack the ceiling once again. They've only had one other campaign which raised over a million dollars, and that was the Infinity Box, the big box for Anachrony. And so if you like the stuff that Mind Clash has been putting out, honestly, you're probably gonna like this one and will probably end up jumping on board. And me, I like Euros. Euro games got me into the board gaming hobby. And while theme and giant monster miniatures are also pretty fun, as someone who really values gameplay, you can't beat a tasty little Euro now, can ya? There's something to be said about the battle of minds, the intense brain-burning action that can happen with a Euro game. And to have that blended with the battling, epic scope of a 4X genre, well, that feels like a really exciting promise. I think the two genres are definitely capable of complementing each other, and I really do hope that this is the perfect complementation. I also really like that from at least what I've seen so far, there are going to be a lot of different scenarios, and, and the different scenarios aren't going to just be setup based. I found with a lot of these scenario type games, like Zombicide comes to mind as something with a big book of scenarios. Ankh, that I got recently, also has this. You're really varying the setup with kind of like slight tweaks to the rules. Not too much will change, but the fact that in Voidfall there are going to be different technologies that you can access depending on the scenario, I think that is really cool. I think it's also really cool that the scenarios are going to emphasize your focus for the game, sort of. One scenario might be more combat oriented, where the Voidborn play a larger part. One scenario might emphasize the technology aspect or the economy aspect where you have to focus on your own personal production. And while those elements are obviously always going to be in each game, it's kind of cool to see the scenarios have such a significant difference of feeling in how the game is played and have an impact on that particular game and session and also provide a helping guide as to what to focus on or what's important for this time through is really great for a game of this size. The replayability seems off the charts with this one. You're getting a bunch of different asymmetrical houses that all promise to play differently. You have a bunch of tech and scenario possibilities, as I just said. You even have a competitive, cooperative, and solo mode coming your way. 
the promise of this campaign makes it pretty easy to get excited about this one. The more I think about it, the more I can feel the excitement sliding around my bones like some baby void born just waiting to erupt into the universe. That's how it works, right? I assume that's how the void born work. But anyway, you're not here for my excitement. Just as I was in high school where I'd run behind the bleachers with a power washer, spraying all those horny teens with a good dose of reality. I am here to splash cold water all over you <laughs> as well. <laughs> as you can imagine, I got invited to a lot of parties and I always brought my hose. So here we go. Let's get into it. The five reasons why you shouldn't back Voidfall. You want to get hyped? Talk to some other Yahoo. And the first reason is number five. It's going to be as cheap, if not cheaper at retail. And I know, I know, the Galactic Box is not going to be sold at retail. And yes, we're going to get into that. But of course, we've got to talk about the price point because it is a big one. If you get the Galactic Box, that's $200 Canadian before shipping. Now, the Galactic Box isn't going to retail. The Galactic Box is pretty much the deluxified version for people who are incredibly excited about the game. And if you want the Galactic Box, well, absolutely, you should get in on this Kickstarter now because it won't be at retail and you shouldn't wait for retail just to be disappointed because you really wanted all those little plastic ships. And this is great. It's a wonderful offer for people who are sure that they are going to love this game. Now's your chance to get the little mini ships, the upgraded triple layered whatevers. There are a significant amount of deluxifications, honestly, mostly to do with the ships, but you might want that to complete your 4X experience. I get that. And this is what the majority of backers are doing. And rightly so, because even though the standard retail version is $90 Canadian cheaper, for those of you who are interested in just the standard version, know that it might be cheaper for you to get it at retail. And you're not gonna be missing on anything. As far as right now, there are no Kickstarter exclusive stretch goals. Everything's gonna be included in that main box. This of course could change as the campaign goes on, but they've already unlocked a ton of stretch goals and I have no idea how much more they have planned. So if you wanted to wait and save yourself the shipping price, if you're fine with it being the retail experience without the bling, it'll most likely be the same experience. Or who knows, down the line, they may even come out with a Voidfall Essential Edition like they did with Anachrony and streamline it further to make it a cheaper purchase for you. This is a dense Euro game at its heart with a 4X theme layered on top of it. And there's a reason why Euros have cubes, because they don't rely on the theme to produce a lot of that enjoyment. And I really do think that this is gonna be the same case with this one. I don't think it's the theme here that gives you the most enjoyment. I think it's gonna be the design, or at least that's what's drawing me in currently. And if you're only interested in the design and you do not need any of the deluxifications, well, my bet is that it's going to be cheaper for you because you won't have to pay the shipping to just get it from your local game store. This of course depends on where you live, what your local store's markup is, but if you can compare the previous Kickstarters that Mind Clash has done, like Anachrony or Chikirian, for me, where I live, I can see that the price point isn't that much different. And the distribution of backers only confirms my suspicions. I don't need all those ships. For that extra $90, I can purchase an entire copy of Blood Rage or an entire copy of another space game that comes with a bunch of ships. <laughs> now, reason number four why you shouldn't back Voidfall is if you're a dumb idiot like me. <laughs> This game is complex, very. You can see it in the faces of everyone who's made a video for it. This is gonna require a depth of strategy that you're not gonna grasp on the first play. Maybe not the second play. Maybe not the third. Maybe not the fourth. I can see that happening, yes. Eight months? That's a realistic timeline. Sorry, I got stuck in a loop there for a second. Even just starting with your initial decisions, you're gonna have nine focus cards and you're gonna pick one of them and you're gonna to have to pick two of the three actions on that card for your turn. And these are not obvious actions and these are very different actions and very different directions that you can shape your space empire. 
there are going to be so many moving parts in this game. The estimated time on Board Game Geek right now is 60 to 240 minutes. And you can bet all of that time comes from thinking about those extra actions because one of the philosophies of one of the designers is that a good game only has 28 actions. David Turksey was talking about this point in a Facebook post on the Board Game Revolution community Facebook group that I'm a part of. And it was a really interesting read and he was talking about his design philosophy, but it is that you get 28 actions, usually two per turn. You can see where the two actions from a focus card philosophy now stems from. Now you know why that's a thing. And this results in you getting five to 10% of your goal or or progressing five to ten percent towards the end of the game and your end game state and so with so few actions or relatively few when you compare it to a deck builder or a skirmish game where you're just pff, chaining everything together these actions need to have that sort of heavy planning behind them honestly 60 to 240 minutes seems like an accurate breakdown because I assume the 60 is if you're playing solo 60 minutes per player and on average you're spending two minutes thinking about every action on your turn. I really like this philosophy. I think it's a really cool way of thinking and a cool way of breaking a game down by its components. And it's true, when you think about it, this is something that I often associate with really heavy, chunky, dense Euro games. That's why I keep calling it a Euro game instead of a four X, where one wrong move can really set you back because that's five to 10% of your game. I don't have many reviews up on this channel yet, but one that I have is Lorenzo Il Magnifico, which I really enjoy and I find is really crunchy and dense, and that has exactly 24 actions every time. I think the fewer actions you have, the more they matter, the more prone you might be to analysis paralysis. I certainly am one of those people. And trying to grasp all the inner workings of the game when you only have so few to try out, you're not going to get that immediate clear picture of strategy in the first couple games. And this may not be a bad thing. It, it certainly isn't a bad thing for me. I really dislike when I feel like I've solved a game after a few plays and I enjoy heavier games. But keep in mind, if you're backing this, this is going to be heavy. This isn't going to be a game that you pull out when you're tired. This is something that you will need to make a point to play. And if you're not in the market for that, or you already have things that fit that mold, well, do you need this one in addition to those? Now, along the same lines of complexity, we have number three, you shouldn't back Voidfall if you hate iconography. What I've found, or at least with Anachrony, and that's the only Mind Clash game that I own, I picked it up recently, I haven't had a chance to play it, but I'm very excited to, but the amount of iconography in that game and in Voidfall, in order to make it language dependent, which again, I think is a great thing because I can only assume it cuts down on production time and maybe minimizes cost because you only have to print the rule book and not various copies of everything else. Although if this price point is anything to go by, maybe it doesn't. Anyway, the amount of iconography might be just overwhelming to you and might detract from you even wanting to get it to the table. At first, it's like anything, the more you play it, the more you'll become familiar with it. But I opened Anachrony the other day in front of my girlfriend and she said, well, at first she saw the box, which had been hidden in my secret shelf of shame behind the walls and underneath the floorboards. <laughs> I'm kidding. Although now that I think about it, I'm sure there's a lot of storage behind the walls and I am running out of storage. So anyway, I pulled it out and she said, Ooh, what's that one? And I said, yeah, this is Anachrony. It's number 44 on Board Game Geek's top games ever. And she said, wow, that that looks really cool. And then I opened the box and she looked at the board and all the symbols and she said, oh wow, this looks like a horrible time. And then we went off on a tangent about iconography and how she wished that there was a universal iconography that was just standard across all games rather than needing to learn them for each individual one. And I mean, I assume there would never be a way to regulate that or get everybody to agree on the same thing. And they're all different usually because they're drawn in the same art style and the same thematic way. And having a pan applicable icon may not be as thematic or interesting to look at. Plus the varied size of boards and cards, I'm assuming would impact the readability of a lot of these things. This is a tangent, but this story is to isolate the fact that yeah, this iconography can be a major deterrent and it may not be a deterrent for you, but it also could be a deterrent for 
people with whom you generally game. I don't usually find iconography a deterrent, but I can't tell you how many times I've opened up Anachrony just to look at the components and the various symbols, and I'm excited to open it up and play it and learn it, only to go, oh, no, I am too tired for this, and to put it right back <laughs> and not even open the rule book and start diving into it. I don't often gravitate to watching rules videos. I often try to learn it just from the rule book. I think part of that comes from me creating videos and feeling like it's a cop-out or I want to develop those sorts of skills so that it's just by rote. But, but sometimes you read 15 to 20 rule books a week <laughs> preparing for a Monday video or you have a long day at work reading through lots of documents and you just want something to be accessible or more immediately accessible than having to learn an entirely new language of hieroglyphics. And like I said, I don't mind iconography. I like iconography. It provides this easy shorthand, takes up less room. I think Terraforming Mars has it exactly right that they have the iconography for when you're familiar and they have the descripting to remind you of what that means when you have forgotten. So if you hate iconography and you, or you find that it is a barrier to entry is that feeling likely to change in a year and a half when you get the game? I would hazard to say probably not. And maybe this isn't the one for you. You don't want something like this sitting on a shelf waiting to get played, but having outside forces stop you from getting it to the table. And that kind of brings us to our number two reason why you shouldn't back Voidfall, and that's if you continually cycle your games. All in all, as we've talked about in the two previous points, this is a game that will reward multiple plays. Through the strategy, through the learning of it, through the incorporation of iconography, the more you play it, I really feel the better and deeper an experience this game will become. But if you cycle your games incredibly frequently and you're not committed to giving this game the number of plays that I think it will require to get to its peak, for you to be able to master it or even to grasp it, well then, this may not be the most sensible purchase. Seriously, are you gonna spend 200 bucks on this game just to pull it out once a year, and every time you pull it out, you have to relearn how to play it because it's been so long since the previous time that you've now forgotten. Because not only is this the sort of thing that's gonna be somewhat overwhelming to new players, the teach is gonna be a little bit involved. And if you aren't completely solid with that teach every time you pull it out, it's, it's gonna be painful for your group. Maybe, maybe maybe it won't be. Maybe your group will like learning it together, whatever. But I know from my own experiences that sometimes it's just easier to turn to an old standby that everybody knows rather than go through the effort of making sure everybody learns this new in-depth game. For me, I like cycling my games. I have a lot of them, too many, probably. <laughs> and like my illegitimate children, I try to visit them at least once a year. And I talked a bit about this in the most recent table talk about collection size, but the larger the collection is, the more games you have, the more games you have to keep in your head and the more likely you are to need this rules refresher. Even if you think you don't. <laughs> I know I don't think I do, and yet I pulled out Tainted Grail for the first time in a long time thinking, oh yeah, I remember everything about this, and was immediately lost when I was trying to set it up. Even just the setup. So really consider how much this will get played, and if you have trouble retaining all the rules and intricacies, will that impact you getting it out again? For some of you, it won't. You are much smarter than old no money, no brains over here. But I know there might be a few of you who are lying to yourself like I lie to myself constantly. My brain is like sand from an hourglass. These are the games of our lives. And the number one reason and why you've all skipped here instead of listening to that other guy yammer on the number one reason you shouldn't back Voidfall Beyond the Frack is if you're backing its sister, Fractal Beyond the Void. And this has been a campaign that a lot of people who've had their eyes on Voidfall have also had their eyes on Fractal. Because it's another epic 4X game set in space with around the same price point. And so naturally, if that's your cup of space tea, you might end up being drawn to both. But do you really, really need both. If you're more excited about Voidfall beyond the Frack, well then by all means back Voidfall. But if you're more excited about Fractal beyond the Void, then just get Fractal. You don't need both, do you? Fractal is the same theme. Fractal's also cheaper. Fractal also has a campaign mode. 
if that's something you'd be interested in. Fractal's base game comes with ship miniatures, so you don't have to pledge to that extra, more expensive level. Fractal also has custom inserts planned, which will help you set up the game and organize it, and perhaps encourage you to get it to the table more frequently, whereas I can't tell you how many plastic baggies filled with stuff came in my copy of Anachrony. Fractal is shorter, 25 to 30 minutes per player versus 60 minutes. There's also going to be more combat in Fractal with this card combat mechanic, where you'll each play a card face down, and you can bluff your opponent with your tactics, whereas the combat in Voidfall is more deterministic, which means you can basically figure out who's going to win or who's going to lose before the combat even happens, aka more Euro. So if you want less Euro and more 4x, well then maybe Fractal is the way to go. Which art style speaks to you more? There's a whole bunch of stuff that is different. And it's easy to dangle these fractal carrots in front of you because the grass is always greener on the other side of the board. And also, I don't have to worry about making one of these for fractal right now because it's only at 200k. But there are naturally things that you might prioritize over other things. And since there is that other option readily available, available for you right now, <laughs> which things do you value more? or they might be different enough to justify getting both. If you really love the theme, if you feel they're both different, and that's great, that's fine. Do whatever you want, don't listen to me. But before you do whatever you want, at least listen to yourself and ask yourself if you really need both games. I mean, you probably don't. And if you need another 4X game, well, hey, go grab Eclipse right now and play that tried and true game while you wait for your preferred one to arrive a year and a half from now. So if you can only get one, which one appeals to you more? Beyond the frack? Beyond the void? <laughs> anyway, that's it. Those are my five reasons you shouldn't back. If you have any thoughts as to why you are excited to back or why you don't want to back this one, make sure to leave them in the comments below because it will be very helpful to convince me to just go ahead and take the plunge and get myself a little treat or to help out anyone else who might be struggling to make their decision. As with a lot of these things, it's nice to have more than one voice and more than one person to bounce ideas off of. As for me, right now, I think you can tell I am able to resist the urge. I'm happy, very happy that it has hit this threshold that I was able to take such a deep dive into it before my usual deep dive for my Monday videos. But I think for me, I don't need the deluxifications. I'm perfectly content waiting for retail, seeing the other reviews, seeing what people think when they get it, and maybe picking it up in the secondhand market or when there's a sale. Or just finally playing my copy of Anachrony because why am I not playing that now if I'm thinking about getting Voidfall? <laughs> I have no right to purchase Voidfall, me personally, until I play Anachrony. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to write in the comments, and if you wouldn't mind, leave a like, subscribe, or send me $10,000 in unmarked bills. Any of those would be appreciated. I know I used that joke in the last video, but I just, I wanted to use it again. So, <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Once again, my name is Chris George, and, uh, uh, oh, I don't have a catchphrase. But I did hear this one in a video that I just watched, and I thought it was very sweet. So remember that you are somebody's reason to smile. I guess I certainly am not Mind Clash's reason to smile today. Oh, dang it. <laughs>